Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Timeless Pick a Card reading. In today's reading, we're going to take a look at what needs to change. I think that's what I'll call this or something around the topic of change and transformation because we had that huge solar eclipse and it happened in Scorpio for us sidereal Vedic people. So yeah, I thought let's have a look at what's changing, you know, maybe the solar eclipse kicked up some dust and things are settling now and maybe we can take a look and see what's changing, what's happening in your world. I know for me that solar eclipse energy was really, really big. I was energetically wiped out on the third, I think it was the third, Friday the third. I just woke up and did my usual morning stuff and uh, had breakfast, everything was normal. And then within an hour or two after breakfast, I just crashed and burned. I just had no energy. It wasn't a headache. It wasn't sickness. It wasn't anything. It wasn't anything I could put my finger on, but uh, I, I just had no energy and I had to lie down for the rest of the day. So yeah, things like that do happen. And for me, that happened on well, just the day before the eclipse, the actual day of the eclipse was fine for me. Nothing really happened. But we've got, uh, you know, group one, group two, group three. We've also got the, what I consider my Saturn deck. We have another deck of guidance. And we've also got this beautiful flower deck. Oh, have a look. There we go. Butter. What is that? Buttercup child. How beautiful. So, yeah, we've got this and we've got the jar of quotes and have a look at this. I don't know if it will come up on the screen, but check out the layer of dust that has formed on here. I have not touched or opened this for a very, very long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dust it now <laughs> so that you can see this has not at all been opened. And yeah, there we go. Now it's actually clean. So I truly do not know what is in here. I yeah, we're going to find out together. So let's see how these readings go this week. So you can pick from group one or group two or group three, and I will see you in your reading. Hi there, group one. If you chose group number one, then you're in the right place. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. I'm just going to make sure these are okay. This is upright because what I want is for these are all what I've done is I've gone through these and I've made them all upright because I want this deck to just be upright all three of them are upright this time there are no reversals so nothing complicated just nice and easy but of course with Saturn there's reversals there's I don't know what's going on in there <laughs> we'll find out because I shuffled that really well too Okay, let's take a look and see what comes through. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't. Oh, why don't we take these? Actually, I don't even know what we're doing. Why don't we just do that? And then we'll have one from the Saturn deck. Why don't we draw them all now? Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. We'll start with three. And if we need more, if we need clarifiers, if we need something else. So this is shuffled very well. I shuffled this before pressing the record button as well. I don't know if you can hear that kookaburra. They are very talkative at the moment. Those lovely kookaburras, such beautiful birds. Okay, we'll have one of these. And we'll have a flower deck as well. And why don't we begin actually with the flower deck? I think the last time I used this, I was outdoors and I was complaining a lot because I, what, what happened was I was wearing these really tight jeans and I was kneeling on the grass and um, it was just a ridiculous place I had chosen to do this. Okay, let's take this one. Right. And let's begin with this. This can be the basis of the reading. Oh, how beautiful. 
cosmos, order. So straight away, I'm getting this feeling that the last solar eclipse might have brought some order to your world. Let's have a read of the of the guide guidance notes. What's that? Cosmos. Order. Cosmos order. Cosmos comes from the Greek word meaning the world and order, stability, security, everything in its place. Well that's a terrific start. So let's have a look here. There we go. I'll rearrange these as we go. Let's see what other guidance we have. Classes. Okay. Learning and teaching are part of your higher calling. Wonderful. I always consider myself an eternal student. You know, I'm always learning all the time. Because I don't think one person can ever know everything there is to know. <laughs> I imagine that, you know, there's not a lot of things that I think are impossible, but I think that might be one of them. Can one person ever know everything? I don't think so. So yeah, learning and teaching are part of your higher calling. Okay, here we have the Nine of Cups in reverse. Okay, I'll chat about this in a moment. Let's see what else we've got. As per tarot. Oh, interesting. We've got the Nine of Pentacles upright. So we've got the Nine of Cups in reverse. We've got the Nine of Pentacles upright. We've got the world. Wonderful. I think this last solar eclipse has done you a world of good, group number one. Oh, fantastic. Death. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, clearly I think something came to an end in your world. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two here. I actually think of all these cards, this, this one represents what happened in that solar eclipse for you. And guys, I know I've said this is a timeless reading, but I'm talking about the last eclipse. But it doesn't matter. Whenever you see this reading, something has come to an end. I think you've ended a really big cycle. And it has brought a lot of order to your world. Okay, so this is good. And this, this will take time to settle into. You'll be adjusting. You'll be... there. Uh, yeah, I imagine that there's a, a period of adjustment here. But the last eclipse that happened, I think that has been a really good thing for you. I think it has brought some, something to a close. Things are clear. You would now be free and you're free to progress on your path. You're free to enjoy enjoy the material world definitely the nine of pentacles is a card of solitary enjoyment of wealth you're free to enjoy the life that you have enjoy the life that you have created are creating it's interesting i don't know if you can hear that noise in the background it's a kind of industrial sounding something or other it's like a gardening tool maybe or i don't know they're building two doors down they're building a new house so this is fascinating because there's so there's something that has ended in your world there's order something has been brought into order the world again completion you've completed something massive here but in a good way in a way that's taking you up to the next thing which you will profit from you're going to continue learning growing teaching as well you have gone up look at that the word teaching is here so now it's not just about learning you've accumulated so much that you're in a position to give you're in a position to teach to share and this is really interesting to me because what I think this is, the Nine of Cups in reverse, when it's upright, this is, 
you know, you're happy to be on your own. This is kind of, I, I guess this is like the happy bachelor card. This is like the guy who's happy to be on his own and, you know, emotionally, you're emotionally fulfilled. And it's a wish fulfillment card as well. When it's in the reverse, I get the sense that this is showing me that you don't want to be the happy bachelor. I'm getting a sense that like you, you want partnership, I do think. But I feel like whatever's happened in that last eclipse, you're in an incredible position to go after that. If you want a partnership, if you want to be with someone that, you know, I think, and, and this is just indicating to me, I think, that you would like to be coupled up or something like that. I am getting that vibe. We can draw another card on that. We can draw, let's take one from here. Let's see what Saturn has to say about this. You know, I think you're not happy to be alone. Okay, that's, if this was upright, it's like you're totally satisfied. Look at that picture right there. You're totally satisfied. There's nothing, you know, yes, something has come to an end. You've completed something. You're in a great position. There's order. And you're happy. You're happy to be alone. But this is in the reverse. So this is why I'm saying that I, I don't quite see you as being happy to be alone. <coughs> oh, sorry. Let's take a look and see what Saturn might have to say. We'll get one more card on this. Let's take this one since it's kind of slipping out. Okay, the Eight of Pentacles. What I'm seeing here is I think, yeah, I, I mean, I think you may want to share the journey with someone, something like this, I can see that, but it's still, you're still in a phase of work. You're still in a phase of creating, of stabilizing, of getting your world fully in order. So I think this, this death, whatever has happened, it has transformed the reality around you. It's brought a lot of stability, closure. Yeah, this cosmos, it's in order. So that's pretty incredible. You're in a position to teach, to share. And I think there's still perhaps some more work to be done. Things are settling, things are happening. Let's see what's in here. Let's see what kind of guidance we get from the jar. And then I'm looking at the time, yeah. We're kind of at that 10 minute mark. Let's take two of these and see what guidance comes through. And I'm now hearing that industrial thing. I think it's a lawnmower. I was wondering, is it something to do with like the house that they're building? But no. Aha, Romana Maharishi, yes. Whatever is destined not to happen will not happen. Try as you may. Whatever is destined to happen will happen. Do what you may to prevent it. This is certain. The best course, therefore, is to remain silent. Oops, that's a bit of a typo there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, silent. There we go. Let's have a look at the next one. See what I mean. Yeah, I, this in the context of this. Let's have a look here. The the energy is slow here. It feels like nothing's gonna change quickly. Here is what I'm seeing. We don't have any swords. We don't have any fire on the table. So this is not about. I think this is just about you integrating, going slow, working, enjoying, enjoying who and what you are and what you have. You got the world at your fingertips. It's amazing. Let's have a look at the next one. And it, it, this is this is basically saying that I think there's not much you need to do <laughs> because life is happening. What do they say? There's another phrase. Uh, Life is what happens when you when you're making other plans. Is that jo jo John Lennon? I think. Yeah. Let's have a look at this one. What's in here? Even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness, and the word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Okay. And I mean, the one emotional cup that we do have here is reversed, like the one emotional card, which is the cups, 
is reversed. So, so perhaps maybe materially everything's fantastic, but you know that that happiness factor could could be more. You know, let's let's take another one. <laughs> we don't want to finish on that. That's too depressing. <laughs> let's see what else is in here. We've got a lot, so I mean, we we can keep going until we find something that's that's really incredible. Destiny is what you create for yourself. Fate is when you fail to create your own destiny. Ooh, Sadhguru. Okay. And what I think, I think the thing to focus here is on what you create for yourself. We have so much pentacle energy here. And I think what's it being indicated here is that you are creating an incredible life for yourself. That's what I'm seeing. All of these cards are really good. There's been a massive transformation. But look, I mean, you don't get much better than the world. You've got the world. You've closed a cycle. You've got the cosmos in order. How many people get that? I've never seen this card before. So a huge amount is going really, really well. You're moving up. You're in a position where you're going to teach others. You know, and you're very stable in your world. And I would say just keep going, group number one. This is a really good spread. Keep going. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know how you got on with this reading below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two, then you are in the right place. Let me just make sure, yep, these are all upright. So let's just shuffle and see what comes through. And I'm going to talk about, okay, well, that one really wants to be there. So <laughs> um, what was I going to say? This is about the solar eclipse that just happened. We're going to have a look at what's changed in your world or where is the dust settling or what's happening. So that is what I will focus the reading on, but it is a timeless reading. It doesn't matter. Whenever you click on this, it's fine. It's amazing. I've had some comments from some of you who've watched the really old ones, but you're watching them now and you're like, hey, this really applied. So yeah, it's really good to know when, when these things do apply. I've watched really old readings by people as well. And um, it's just bizarre how this works, isn't it? So as with any of my readings, take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. I'll take that. This is my Saturn deck. Let's see what Saturn has to say. Let's take one of these flower deck cards. So beautiful. I'll take that one. And take one of these. If we need any clarifiers, we can get clarifiers. It's kind of noisy here today. I don't know if you can hear all this. Like, it's, so we've got a kookaburra in the background. We've got a lawnmower. All kinds of things. I mean, you're off to a great start. The Ace of Pentacles, you don't get much better than that, group number two. So let's see what's in here first. Oh, how lovely. Carnation, mother. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Parents. Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, well, let's read and see what's in there. Carnation. Mother. Nurture and care for another and they will bloom. Tend the garden of the world and it will tend you. How lovely. Oh. Well, that's a terrific start. Gee, that with the Ace of Pentacles. Wow. Great energy here. Vision board. Wow, this is fun. Create a board with images and words that inspire you. Yes, I love this kind of thing. I did this. I did this quite a little bit actually when I was renting in London. I was going to different places, living in different places and I kept a bit of a vision board. I did a cork board style one one time and then I did like a paper sort of one. It's so much fun to do. And I didn't really keep any of them so I don't really know what's worked out but okay wow we've got the world in reverse. We just had the world in group one. Okay, but you've got it in reverse here. Interesting. 
Let's have a look. Okay, so you've got the Ace of Pentacles there. Oh, the Ace of Swords, two aces. Okay. Big energy, group two. And the Four of Cups, yeah, that's interesting. There's a little bit of boredom here, maybe. Uh, interesting. There is a bit of boredom. And, you know, I'm not seeing this in terms of sometimes this can be a card of mild depression. Sometimes people interpret it in that way, that it's depression energy. Here I'm, I'm just seeing it as a bit of mild boredom. You know, there's... Let's have a think. Vision board. There's a cycle that is wanting to complete here with the world in reverse, but it hasn't completed. And I think it, in order to complete it, in order to complete this cycle, you're being asked to vision what it is that you want. You're being asked to get sharper about, about your vision and what it is that you need to do. I'm going to see, yeah, this Ace of Pentacles, I'm going to see this in terms of doing. But the, the main guidance that I'm seeing here, this is really strong, the vision board and the Ace of Swords. This is you need to vision the completion of this cycle. And I think this is about birthing something as well because we've got carnation, mother. So this could be to do with you being creative birthing something, making something real. This is about you earthing something, grounding something, birthing something. But what I'm wondering is, is this connected in with, <coughs> with this cycle? I'm thinking it might not be. I'm seeing these are together. I'm seeing that you're kind of, I think, I feel like there's some boredom. There's something where maybe you're spinning your wheels or you're, yeah, you you know, you're that hamster on the wheel or you, life is going, but you're like, you know, okay, well, what next? But the universe, I think, is asking for you that, hey, we're going to need you to vision things a bit stronger so that we can help you close this cycle out. So there's a cycle here that, that does want to close out and finish for you, you might be waiting for the universe to do something about it, but actually I think the universe is kind of going, no, we need you to, to vision this. There's something about, there's something you need to do, actually. And I feel like once this cycle completes and closes out, then you're going to be able to birth this incredible new thing. Something brand new is wanting to be birthed through you. So you are, you're kind of at the top of a cycle. You're just about completing on a big cycle or something. There's something that wants to close out. You're bored and you're probably thinking, yeah, universe, do it. But no, universe is saying, we can't. You need to do some more visioning. If you can dream it, if you can see it, if you can, you need to do a bit more of that. Get into your imagination, visualize, that kind of thing is going to be needed. This is fascinating, group two. I'm excited for you. This what wants to come through is amazing. This is the new, th and you're going to birth it, you're going to earth it. This could be a new project, a new house, and you maybe you're writing a book. Maybe it is having children. Maybe it is meeting someone or all those wonderful earthly things. Sure, right? But like this will start there's a little bit of work more needed from you i feel like and it has something to do with you you being clear about visioning it what's the dream what do you really want the universe needs needs something uh, from you it needs you to do the, the visualizing okay so let's see what comes through in the guidance i have no idea what's in the jar this time 
really excited to see. Ooh. The most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of true art and science. Wow, one of the things I love about this quote is that he's calling the mysterious a fundamental emotion. And that's interesting. The most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious of not knowing. And you know, because Einstein's chart, he had a lot of, he had four planets in Pisces in the 10th house. And so he did spend a lot of time visualizing, imagining, being in that realm of, yes, it is fantasy, you know, fantasy, imagination, being in that mysterious space and place. Pisces is very mysterious. It's the all, it's hidden, it's subconscious. So there's something about you being more in that space to close out a cycle and to yes visualize the new and, and for the new the new is wanting to come through as well but it's like it feels like this is a this is coming but more immediately the place where you are is is, is right here is being in that mysterious space and imagining visualizing directing the universe it's like the universe saying okay we want to make it for you but what is it that you want us to make Okay, let's have a look and see what this is. This is a really cool reading, group number two. I'm loving it. The world is not imperfect or slowly evolving along a path to perfection. No, it is perfect at every moment. Every sin already carries grace in it. Herman Hesse, yeah. I read a book by him one time. He's fantastic. The world is not imperfect. And I think you know this. Every sin already carries grace in it. Definitely. The perfection of the now. I think you are being directed to be more in the now as well. So when it comes to the time dimension of what's happening here, I think the swords are faster than the pentacles. This is going to take some time to come in, whatever this is that you're about to birth. But yeah, I think with thought energy, we're still not quite in the now, are we? I think fire energy tends to be quite now. When there's a fire going, you have to attend to it right now kind of thing. So, but I think this is asking you to be, yes, be in the now, but be using the mind, be visualizing, be imagining, be dreaming. And you will definitely close out the cycle that you're meant to close out. So group number two, I do hope this has been a good reading for you. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would love to hear how this went. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, then you are in the right place. Let's take a look. I'm just going to make sure, yes, these are upright they're all upright today except for the Saturn deck except for this one those are up and down and all sorts of things <laughs> I didn't bother to clean that up sometimes what I do is periodically I will just make it 50 50 upright 50 50 like 50 upright 50 reverse sometimes I just kind of try and clean it up this is just all upright today because I just felt like, you know, I don't know. I just felt like having a, having a nice, easy reading. Uh, gosh, someone's doing a lot of gardening out there. They've got the power tools out. I've got a lot of industrial noises in the background. I apologize about this, guys. I only get a certain amount of time to do these. And, yeah, sometimes noise can be, I don't know why, but it distracts me sometimes. Um, okay.
And as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. Because these are general readings, a lot of people watch them. And you know, some messages apply, some don't. I, that, I love that about tarot pick cards, I watch them too. And um, yeah, I, I always find when I click on one, just, I click on something randomly and it just contains something incredible there. Okay, there we go. I'm poking out. Let's well, let's start with this. Oh, how beautiful! Oh, this is wonderful. Group three, Rose, true love. That's a gorgeous start. Wonderful. Love is all around. You know, it really is. It's in the rustle of the trees. It's in. It's in the sunlight. Let go. Okay, we've got release the desire to control this situation and leave it up to God's infinite wisdom to resolve everything beautifully. Okay, so we've got some letting go. All right, Six of Cups in reverse. Okay. The Four of Pentacles holding on. The two of rods or wands, upright. These are all upright though. Okay. And uh -huh, seven of cups. Well, there's quite a lot of beautiful things happening on the table here. And this does actually seem to be about love. This is about emotions. We've got this card in reverse here, the Six of Cups. When this is upright, we are, and look at these two bunnies, aren't they happy? <laughs> yeah, this is really sweet. This is a really lovely card of nostalgia, of being really happy, of being you know, with someone that you really love. This is a beautiful card. But it's in its reverse position. So, and maybe you're trying to maybe you're trying to let go of someone but there's some holding on energy here and that's okay but there is true love here on the table as well and there's confusion on the table there's a lot love life can be like this it can be so confusing because it's like well you don't know. You know. There's so much you don't know. You know, look at that. All these cups full of illusions. Which one do I pick? I don't know. What's good for me? It's hard, right? It's hard to figure out what our emotions are. And I actually think that's, you know, the love readings on the internet for Tarot Pick a Card. I mean, that's the biggest category, right? Everyone's clicking on those to find out what's the boyfriend up to, what's the girlfriend up to. <laughs> the, the, the birth of this pick a card industry is like, is all about this because it's hard to figure out. It's hard to know, especially when there's confusion. You know, you may think that this is a true love that you may be holding on to. But, you know, we have this in reverse. So it's not, it's not quite going right, whatever this is. And your best cards on the table really are these two. This one that's asking you to let go, release the desire to control this situation and leave it up to God's infinite wisdom to resolve everything beautifully. God will heal everything back to new. God will heal your heart back to new, the other person's heart back to new, and yes, you may come together. This may become upright. I don't necessarily see this as a card that you're looking for someone else. I see this as a card of confusion. That's how I'm seeing this. 
You might be worried about the other person. This is in reverse. You might be worried about the other person. That well, you know, is the other person, you know, am I just an option for them or what? Yeah, it's it's all this. They might be wondering that of you. Am I the true love kind of thing? But there's something you're holding on here. And these these two are your best card. Let go. Let God heal everything back to new. Look at that. She's holding her heart, right? So give your heart to God. Okay, that's going to be the safest thing to do. It's not very safe sometimes to give it to another person, right? Because, um, you know, yeah, it's not easy. And this is asking you to look ahead and to plan and to plan your own life. Plan your life. Plan what is it that you want to do. Hold the world in your hands and think about what it is that you what it is that you truly love. We've got true love here. What do you truly love? On your own, you know? Look ahead, plan ahead. So while you're letting go, because letting go is going to be needed here, that's going to be really important. We, we will get a couple of clarifiers. Let's get some more. Let's see what else is going on here. So let's get one of these and we'll get another uh, card from Saturn as well. Let's take that one and we will take one from here too. And then we'll see what's in the jar. But I'm seeing... I think looking ahead, planning, and this is planning your life just as you, okay? And what do you truly love? This is your true love. The true love that you have is in your heart, actually. You see, because if you're wanting love from an outside person or an outside thing, that's not a great strategy, right? Because then you become dependent. The true love that you want to find that that's in your heart, you know, by yourself, on your own. Okay, let's see what this is. I will start with this one. Oh, wow, the Queen of Swords. Mmm, you got it. Yeah, it's like you got to get sharp about what it is that you want. She's no nonsense, okay? She... <laughs> She's a tough one, this one, and, and she's a realist, and she's practical. She's a bit full on. She's not, you know, she's not the queen of cups. She's, she's you know, uh, she's very she's sharp, this one. <laughs> so, yeah, she's come out. That's interesting. All right, and let's see what this is. Okay, we've got the nine of swords in reverse. Look at that. These two came out together. It's and what what I'm getting from this is that you could do with being strategic. You could do with being strategic, thinking about yourself, defining your future, and and you going for it on your own. That's going to be good. That's what I'm seeing here. And if you do that. All the anxiety and the worry that this confusing situation may have been causing you, this is all just going to go away, okay? Because you're building you. And that's a good thing. I just get the sense that that's, that's what you need to do right now. And it doesn't mean that you're not loving or something, you know? Because we are all of these cards. You're the Queen of Cups as well. You're the Queen of Wands as well. You're the you're all the different queens. But it's just that right now, the energy that's needed for you is that right now it will suit you. It will be good for you to because this confusion will cloud your way and your vision, and uh, it will hold you back. Actually, holding on, but holding back. Okay, you don't want to be held back either. That's another way of looking at this. You don't want to be held back by this situation. You want to go forward. That's going to be important. You got to go forward. You got to be strategic. You got to be uh, a little bit sharp here. 
It's not a time to be sentimental or emotional. That's what I'm getting from these cards. Let's take a look and see. And the true love that you seek, that's always there in your heart. You know, and give your heart to God. He's the best one to take care of you and to take care of your, your beautiful heart, you know. You don't want to just give that to anyone. <laughs> Gotta look after it. All right, let's see what's in here now. I'm very curious because I do not know what's in this jar. I hope this is uh, helpful. Let's see. Oh, men are not afraid of things, but of how they view them. Epictetus, yeah. Men are not afraid of things, but of how they view them. And it's interesting, we've got the Queen of Swords here and you needing to be strategic. There's something about you changing your view and not being afraid of being like left out in the cold or oh I won't have anyone or no don't don't fear that change your view interesting okay what else have we got here Oh good, that lawnmower noise has died down. See, there's a lot of calmness. There's a lot of good, calm, beautiful energy here, group three. Oh wow. Yeah, the purpose of literature is to turn blood into ink. T.S. Eliot, that's great. Oh, that's fantastic, because that's this. That's the Queen of Swords. Look, I mean, if anyone's gonna write things down, it's her, you know? That's what the Swords is all about. The Swords is about thought energy, right? You're being asked, and whatever it is that you're going through, you know keep it take it this is you could come up with poetry out of this or I think it was who's that singer at the moment is it Taylor Swift there's somebody who every time she has a breakup she creates like this album that makes her millions of dollars or something like that so I mean look at that <laughs> you know you could turn this into something if if you are going through something let's get another couple since we've got we've got quite a bit here let's get two more and then whatever the rest are I'll, i might put them on instagram and we'll start a fresh jar i'll start something new because i don't even know what's going on all right let's see what is here oh how beautiful yeah i mean rumi's the man you know you have to keep breaking your heart until it opens yes yeah that's just gold that is perfect for this group right it's it's you know and allow it to break, allow it to hurt, allow it to open. Yeah, it, it, it is opening. And the more, the more open your heart is, hopefully you'll attract someone whose heart is equally open, you know. Uh, okay, one more, one more. I know we're going a bit long here, but I, I don't know, I'm just greedy. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Aristotle, look at that, mind, thought. Yeah, this is, there's, so there's heart energy on the table. This is about love, but you're being asked to get logical, be logical about it, be practical about it, be real about it, and, you know, try on different thoughts. See, you know, and that, that's this, that's this seven of cups here. It's confusing, right? There's a lot of confusion, but you can try on different thoughts. And use your intuition to see how those thoughts feel and fit. And that's one of the good things about pick a card, because as you do all these different pick a cards, you're trying on these different thoughts and mm, what resonates, what, what, you know, because sometimes these pick a card readings are good at voicing emotions or things that you're feeling that, you know, it's, it's, pick a cards have done that for me. They've definitely done that where I, I didn't even know I was quite feeling that, but some reader just d defined it. And yeah, it's, it's enormously helpful. So group number three, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Let me know in the comments below. I'm sorry, I have to end it here. This is a very interesting reading, but uh, let me know in the comments below how you got on. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time.